Hi, my name is David Steele. I'm a product manager here at Arcturus. Today, what I'm going to show you how to do is create a serial console connection between your PC machine and the UCBF54X module and uh, host board. Uh, I'm going to show you how to start the command line interface for our voice and media middleware. I'll show you how to place a call, receive a call, use some of the features that are available in the middleware, and uh, also give you some uh, tips and tricks. So the first thing you need to do is uh, make sure your system's uh, set up. Uh, and there's a video to uh, show you how to set up your, uh, your module and uh, host board. Uh, but I'll give you a quick overview of what I've got configured so far. So I've got the, uh, the module plugged into the host board here. I've got uh, the power applied. I've got a network connection. I've got a pair of PC speakers here plugged into codec 2 output. I've got my laptop set up. And it's got a network connection back to my mini hub uh, where both devices are connected. And I've got an internet connection as well. So what I want to do to create the console connection is I'll need a console cable. And I have a console cable right here. Uh, this cable is a USB to RS-232 uh, connection. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug that uh, into my PC. Uh, I'm then going to uh, plug the other end into connector 12, con, con 12 uh, of the host board, which is a serial console connection. Uh, the next thing I'll need to do is to start my terminal application. Uh, and there's several terminal applications available. My favorite terminal application on Windows is uh, an application called Poderosa, which you can download for free. If you're using Linux, you'd probably want to use something like Minicom. So uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, start my console. Uh, the one thing you need to remember about uh, uh, USB to RS-232 transceivers is sometimes the operating system can uh, enumerate the device differently. So you might have to try a couple different times to, uh, to find the right uh, COM port that it's on. I'm pretty sure that uh, my USB dongle is uh, set up on COM port 4. Uh, and I'm going to configure it at a baud rate. The correct baud rate for the device is 11,500, 8 bits, no parity, one stop bit, and no flow control. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to press Enter to confirm that I actually do have a login uh, console here. And you can see the login screen. I'm going to enter root as the login ID and admin as the password. And this is going to bring me up to a, uh, the hash symbol or the octothorpe, which is the, the Linux shell prompt for the device. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the AT command application and the AT emulator application. And I do that by typing AT CMD space slash ATEMUL0. And I'm going to attach it. The zero means I'm attaching it to SIP instance zero. I'm going to press Enter. And uh, I'll notice that uh, a confirmation comes up. And I get an OK. That means that the uh, command line application has been uh, started. And uh, now I've got a, a command session with the voice and media middleware. So in a previous demo, I've uh, shown you how to use a GPIO SW3 to read back the IP address of the device. We can do the same thing from this uh, command console as well. What I want to do to do that is I want to use the command ATD. If you remember from the old modem days, that would be attention dial. And then star star 99. And from the telephony days, uh, star star 99 is a feature code or, or more explicitly a vertical service code. So now I'm just going to press Enter. Your IP address, 192.168.1.11. And uh, now, now I'm just going to hang up and use the command ATH to hang up. There's a whole bunch of commands that are available to me right now. Uh, there are control commands, like the ones I just demonstrated, ATD and ATH. There are status or ATS commands, which can do things like determine the registration state of the device. Uh, there's feature codes, uh, like star star 99 or vertical service codes. And there's also progress messages that come back through the API to keep you informed of what the status of the session is. So I'll give you an example of that. I'm going to just dial my cell phone number. Now everyone will have my my cell phone number on YouTube. And it's going to answer it. And there you can hear my voice. 
and then I'm just going to go ahead and hang up. And now I'm just going to hang up the, the voice application as well. And uh, you can see through the, through the uh, feedback from the, from the API that uh, I get some uh, important information. I get date and timestamp. I get the number. Uh, and if there is caller ID name that's available, uh, it'll be provided as well. And the same thing happens uh, going the other way as well. So if I were to take my cell phone and dial the number that's on the board, which I'm doing right now, you can see that coming in now, and you can you can hear it ringing uh, on on the board itself. So to answer that call, I'm just going to type ATA, and, and uh, uh, now you can now see you with can the connect, connect symbol. symbol. Uh, that I've got a media stream as well. I'm just going to go ahead and, and hang up. And you can see the caller ID information uh, as well as my, uh, my cell phone number. Uh, so pretty easy to use interface. Uh, and uh, I can show you a couple of other tricks as well. A uh, good little trick is the ATS99 uh, command. And uh, ATS99 uh, checks the registration state of the device. So one means that the device is registered, so it means there's an account on the device, and the account has registered against the server, and, uh, and it's good to be used. Uh, and there's also uh, reset commands as well. So there's, uh, there's two reset commands in the API that are available that talk directly to the phone application, one which is an authoritative reset, and one which signals a reload of the, the phone application's configuration file as well. Um, the, the one that uh, configures, uh, that signals a reload of the, uh, the configuration file, ATR, lowercase r, will get accepted by the API. And uh, then it will determine if there's uh, any, uh, um, if the system has been busy. And if it's not been busy and it thinks it's in an idle state, it will uh, restart the application. As you can see, reports back an error the second it goes down. And then as it comes back up, it uh, reports an up and it takes a, uh, much less than a second for that uh, process to uh, to go ahead. Uh, there's uh, there's other features that are available as well. I can use ATS commands to control the volume. I can use ATD feature codes to start broadcasts, to stop broadcasts. I can even play back pre-recorded messages uh, that are on the device as well. And uh, those those commands are all available through the command uh, the command line emulator, and uh, also as uh, reference examples for you to uh, build an implementation around. Uh, there's also configuration options that are available in the web GUI that relate to how the system uh, is handled. So for example, you can enable things like auto hang up mode, or you can uh, enable intercom answer mode. Auto hang up will automatically hang up on a call for you, and intercom answer mode will automatically answer a call when it, uh, when it receives it. Uh, we're using just the normal dial mode. And that's how you set up and run the command line interface to our voice and media middleware.